All right, so by now you've probably jumped into Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, ready to conquer the wild blue yonder, and chances are, if you're a Flight Sim fan, you've probably been blown away by the visuals and the enormity of the simulation in general. And in that regard, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the weather technology and the mapping involved in this simulation are truly incredible. I mean, they're gorgeous. I don't think anybody can argue with that fact. You look out as you're flying your Piper Cub, down a you know a alpine canyon and you look out and you just you feel like you're there the immersion is quite spectacular but i'm here to tell you things aren't all sunshine and rainbows in ms fizz land even despite you keeping it that way with the weather slider really if you haven't flown a real aircraft there's a solid chance you've wondered how realistic some of these simulators are you may have even wondered how you might fare landing a real aircraft and that line of thinking may have led you down the internet rabbit hole of trolling forums and looking for opinions of armchair pilots and real pilots alike as they squabble about the quality of the 2020 flight model. And if you haven't, like all good debates, I'm here to help you out. There are two binary camps. Either the flight model is a breakthrough and the most realistic thing they've ever encountered, or it leaves a lot to be desired. And based on the title of this video, you can kind of guess what camp I'm in. But before I proceed to completely dismantle Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 into a heaping pile of garbage, making you uninstall it from your computer and writing a Sobo nasty emails, let me clarify by saying that if you are the type of pilot who is going to use Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 for the type of flying that I expect 99% of you do, I'm talking general, just sightseeing, flying normally, maybe even IFR proficiency practice, that kind of thing, normal flight envelope flying, you're not going to have any problems. It's an absolutely adequate flat model, and in that case, we're done here. Pack it up, go home, folks. There's no more for you in this video. We're done. It's fine. It's okay. However, if you even creep outside of that normal flight envelope, even for a second, even with your pinky toe for one minute, it's over. The whole game's a bust. You might as well load up Grand Theft Auto V and start stealing airplanes from the airport because this whole thing goes tits up. You see, I'm no programmer. I wouldn't know how to code my way out of a paper box, but I'll tell you one thing. I do know how to fly an airplane. I've flown a lot of them. And I can tell you that this thing is a thinly veiled disguise of a flight model. Just enough effort put in to keep your weekend warrior Piper pilot happy as he goes from point A to point B, maybe to his neighborhood, airport for his hundred dollar hamburger because the weather's bad so he wants to simulate it and if you're that guy more power to you dude i don't have any problems with you keep on keeping on it's a gorgeous game go for it but if you want to fly like a chad if you want to fly an airplane like it's not meant to be flown step out of that normal envelope for even a moment it's gonna go bad and i'm gonna show you why now you might remember if you've had any pilot training especially if you took your private pilot i'm kind of mainly talking to private pilots here that your flight instructor told you something that maybe went in one ear and out the other. I know it did for me, so that's why I'm phrasing it that way. But your flight instructor may have looked at you one day during a flight lesson and been like, Remember, Johnny, you can stall this airplane at any airspeed, not just, not just the bottom of those green and white arcs. And I remember when my flight instructor said that, you know, I was like, no. I added that, no, you can't. I mean, obviously, how are you going to stall if you're flying with 120 knots of airspeed? That's not something that exists. And apparently, those people at Asobo that were designing the flight model of Ms. Fizz 2020 uh, also were not listening the day that their flight instructors told them that you can stall at any airspeed because they forgot about how load factor influences angle of attack. And for those of you who think I'm just speaking another language now, we're going to get right into this. So I'm not here to do a complete aerodynamic breakdown of induced parasitic drag, angle of attack, load factor. There's plenty of great videos, plenty of great flight instructors other than me online that'll show you all about that stuff. If you, if you want to go look into that stuff, go for it. If you want me to make a video about that kind of thing, feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, and we'll consider it. It's something I might do in the future. But for now, we're just going to talk about specifically accelerated stalls and why they're total hot garbage in Ms. Biz 2020, because apparently Osobo doesn't know what load factor is, which is fine, but we're going we're gonna to call them out on it, because they need to be called out on it. So if we enter a turn, like a steep turn, and we start applying back pressure, we're going to increase the load factor, right? And in fact, even just existing at that bank angle is going to have some load factor. If I, ba if I bank over to 60 degrees at angle of bank, I'm going to be at 2 Gs just from, just from hanging out there. That's just the requirement for level flight at 60 degrees angle of bank is 2 Gs. So 
if I add more back pressure, I'm going to have more Gs, right? And as I increase my load factor, if I increase the G-forces that I'm experiencing, I'm actually tricking the airplane into thinking that it weighs more than it does, right? So if I'm at 2 Gs and I have a 2,500-pound airplane, now I have a 5,000-pound airplane. And that wing has to come up with 5,000 pounds with a lift. So how does that happen? Well, as we increase the G-forces, we also have to increase the angle of attack. And as we increase the angle of attack, eventually, we're going to get to the critical angle of attack. We're going to stall the airplane. So that's what your instructor meant when he said that you can stall the airplane at any airspeed. I can do 120 miles an hour and at a Cessna 152, I can pull over to enough G-forces to exceed my critical angle attack at that speed. Now you're probably going to slow down from that speed at, at some point, but it's going to be much, much higher than your VS1 or VS0 that you're typically used to, the bottom of the green and the white arc. And this like relationship between angle of attack, load factor, and your stall speed is not some magical nebulous formula that involves calculus and, and people in laboratories. It's not. It's your stall speed increases as a proportion to the square root of the load factor, right? So we just square root the load factor, and then that proportion is increased to your stall speed, right? So square root of 2, if I'm doing 2 Gs, is what? What is it? 1.41. So 41%. So your stall speed is going to increase by 41%. So if our stall speed in uh, 152 is 33 with the flaps out, right? So increase that by 44%. What is that? Transfer is 12, so it's going to be 45, okay? In a 60 degree bank at 2 Gs. So if we're pulling 4 Gs, right, square root of 4 is 2, so 2 times. So whatever the stall speed is, double it. It's super easy, right? And before someone says, you can't pull 4 Gs in a system, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You absolutely can. You can get out there and load it in the utility category where the maximum G forces are allowable are 4.4 Gs, and absolutely go pull 4 Gs in your system. So if you have a product like Microsoft Flights of 2020 where you're calling it a simulation, and people are out there flying Cessna products that are capable of pulling 4.4 Gs. I think if your interest was developing a good sense of what the airplane's capable of doing and not killing you by pulling a ton of unwanted G-forces from base to final or something, I would want to know that the stall characteristics are pretty in the same ballpark. They're in the same universe at least, right? So maybe, maybe it doesn't stall at 80, right, in 4G turn. Maybe it stalls at like, what, okay, like 50 like, or 60. Okay, that's still in the same world right that's still normal that's still like a simulation um let me show you something all right so here we are in a p51 mustang and we're just going to do a stall demo in a good flight model that i uh i have experienced in digital combat simulator i'm just going to go ahead and get configured here put the gear down so we can get that annoying horn to shut off and as you can see i'm just here at uh, what am i at 6500 feet and i'm just going to hold my altitude the best i can as we slow down and we're going to find out when the normal stall of this aircraft is. So under 1G conditions, where the load factor is not affecting the stall speed at all, where does the P-51 stall? So you can see we're just slowing down here. We're about 150 miles an hour. We're just going to keep pulling back. Holding that nose up, just like you would do in private pilot training. How realistic is this? So when would the P-51 go ahead and stall? Starting here, maybe a little bit of buffeting. There we go. Maybe back a little backfiring from the engine there. There's some definite buffet at 100 miles an hour, 90 miles an hour, and then the wing dips 85 to 90 miles an hour. So we can see stall speed 85 to 90 VSO. So that's a clean configuration. So now we're going to find out how much does the load factor, if this flight model is realistic, how much does the load factor? You can see down here to the right, we have an accelerometer. We can see how many g-forces that we're pulling and i'm going to find out how much does it affect it so here we go i'm going to load up the aircraft we'll find out if we get buffet so here we go there's two g's two g's 2.2 g's and i immediately stalled there at 140 miles an hour so just do some quick math there square root of 2.2 .2 is 1.48 times 90 miles an hour we get 133.5 miles an hour you can see we stalled there probably about 140. So you can see that angle of attack is definitely affecting the characteristics of the stall in this flight model. Okay, now we are in the 152 at uh, Sedona here in uh, Mizbiz 2020. We're at 5,000 feet. I'm going to pull the power to idle, just like I said you'd do. Private pilot training, we're going to do just the stall demo, and we're going to slow the aircraft down, find out where the VS0 is, right? So where is the clean wing configuration stall? 
should be about the bottom of the green arc, but it is actually pretty realistic to find that the aircraft actually stalls well below that. So we're going to hold it off, hold it off. There's 40 miles an hour, excuse me, 40 knots. That's taking consideration of the difference. There's 30 knots. And we find that the aircraft actually enters like a falling leaf. So it's stalled. You can see that we are just uh, like descending quite rapidly, 1,200 feet a minute here. But uh, there's no G-brake, which actually can happen depending on how hard. So we're going to go ahead and force it into a full stall by pitching way above the horizon. And there's third, about 20, I guess, maybe 20, 25. And you see there's a, finally a G-brake there. Okay, so now we're out here, we're gonna do the accelerated stall test. So we're gonna hold at 5,000 feet here, and I'm gonna go ahead and load the airplane up, and we're gonna see if we get any difference in stall speed. So here we go, we're gonna put it up there, 60 degrees, so that'd be two Gs, so 41% addition on what we say, 30 knots, right? So but I'm looking for somewhere around 40, 42. Let's see if we get that. So we've still got that 60 degree bank at 40, we're well below 42, and there's a loss of altitude, maybe a little bit of a stall, but maybe not too bad, let's find out. We're gonna come over here to the right bank and we're just gonna haul back, full back on the stick. Plenty more than two Gs, it should be stalling. So it's it's really not, I got the stick pinned in my lap. There's 40, no break, no buffeting, not even any buffeting. We're at 40, 39, 35, losing altitude no doubt, but definitely not any buffeting or stalling. The airplane's still, the wing is still flying. We're just, we're just producing enough drag and that turn at that speed that we can't maintain altitude. All right, so I hear some of you may be asking, why is this important? It seems like a relatively small detail again. Also, if you're flying in the normal envelope, you shouldn't really encounter this, but you would be wrong. Here is me in the P-51 doing the private pilot killer base to final overshoot. And the reason the accelerated stalls are so dangerous is again, if we overshoot center line, we just quickly try to come back. No, oh, there's an accelerated stall because we loaded the airplane up. And uh, well, you can see here, it doesn't usually end up well. So as I said before, it's important for a flight simulator to exhibit accurate accelerated stall characteristics because it might have you building bad habits if you ever go fly a real aircraft, which I can show you here. So you can see that if angle of attack is completely inconsequential at 90 uh, knots, we could just go ahead and not consider stalling. Stalling really is a thing for, you know, beta pilots, in my opinion. Especially if you're a MizFizz pilot, stalling is really more of something that losers do. Uh, something that people who haven't been adequately trained in the Jedi ways of flying the Cessna. We can, we can just go, you know, Chad pilots can go whatever bank they want. They can fly at whatever bank and whatever airspeed, and they know at the end of the day, the stall speed in the POH is a constant. That is not something to be considered. Also, you can do things like this. If you, uh, you don't feel like landing there, just go ahead and bank over 45 degrees at 35 miles an hour. And you know, it's fine. It's gonna be fine. Only if you were a weakling would you worry about an accelerated stall in these conditions. You just plop right down the runway. I don't know why people say flying's hard. It's super easy. All right, so uh, having completed the 152 meme stall test, I came back and I thought maybe the King Air would be a little bit more realistic. Maybe they took a little bit more time here. The flight model of the King Air, maybe it's a little realistic, right? Let's go ahead and see where the, uh, the stall test is. So I put the gear down and I brought the power to idle. As you see here, powers get completely at idle. And I was just gonna see where if I just held full back pressure on the stick, uh, where it wanted to stall. And uh, then I could compare that for an accelerated stall test. And boy, was I surprised to find that um, not only could I not find the stall speed of the King Air, but um, apparently these engines make enough thrust with the gear down that uh, you can just fly more or less straight and level at idle thrust, at idle torque, rather. Uh, and eventually you just hit a speed where you're good, man. In fact, I'm climbing a little bit. No big deal. Just got the gear out. 
We're at idle. And, you know, I've never flown a King Air in real life. I'll admit that. I've flown some larger aircraft than a King Air, but I've never flown a King Air. So if you're a King Air pilot and this is realistic, you know, shame on me. You leave it in the comments. Let me know that I'm crazy. But uh, I find this one hard to believe. Here I'm going to go ahead and test to see if I can really get it to stall by just pitching up at idle with the gear out. It's a lot of drag on those gear. And uh, here we go. Again, I run out of elevator authority. But uh, no stall. Not even a buffet. Not even a little bit of a buffet. And uh, I think you guys know what's going on here. I think it's obvious that uh, well, I'm just such a chad that I just don't stall. The laws of aerodynamics just don't apply to me. And uh, you can see even at 75 knots, uh, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I, I don't stall airplanes. I just personally don't do it. It's not something that's even in the realm of possibility for me. So look, at the end of the day, is this a deal breaker for your average pilot? Probably not. But I thought it would be good for everyone here to know that if you're at full flaps to and base to final, well below your approach speed, and you're hauling back on that stick and finding it realistic that you could put full back pressure on the elevator and not have any issues at all, let me tell you, you're in for a bad time.